Welcome back to Mobility at Work. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by Asper. Asper offers the most powerful, advanced and secure device management solutions for Android dedicated devices. Need us to experience the magic of Asper at the Smart Nation Expo and Forum at stand number P8148. Welcome back to Mobility at Work and today is our first episode for Season 2. So in this episode, we'll be joined by a guest speaker from one of the local universities, which is University Kebangsa in Malaysia. She's a lecturer and also an expert in the Cybersecurity Research Center. So her name is Dr. Wan Fariza. First of all, thank you so much Dr. Wan Fariza for taking your time to talk in our podcast. So how are you today? How can I address you? <laughs> yeah, you can just call me Fariza, yeah? All right. Mm. So, yeah, firstly, thank you for inviting me to share your views in your podcast series as well. All right. Thank you so much, Fariza. So uh, today we will talk about security for digital transformations everywhere you need it. But before we continue, uh, perhaps you could uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah. All right. My educational background is in computer engineering. Uh, I began my career in Telecom Malaysia, uh, TM, uh, TM, yeah, known as TM, mm-hmm. IT department. Then I furthered my studies and entered the academic field. So currently, I'm a lecturer and teaching networking courses. Uh, I'm a certified uh, trainer for Cisco, Huawei, as well as EC Council. Uh, my main research interest includes uh, natural language processing, web and social media, information extraction and processing. And since I joined UKM five years ago, uh, I've actually gone into uh, cybersecurity and I've been applying my research in that area. Okay, so mm-hmm. I'm actually part of the Cybersecurity Research Center in the Faculty of Information mm-hmm. Science and Technology, UKM. So we are currently conducting research on cyberbullying detection. Um, online scam detection. Uh, so one example is the romance scam. And other than research, we are actually also involved in raising public awareness about cybersecurity, uh, especially among school children, women, because uh, they are the most vulnerable. So they, they have to be aware that there are actually many predators online. And the uh, generation Z especially, because they are actually the one considered as the digital natives. So they have to be careful in what they share. Okay, so uh, they got to know that uh, the more information that they share, the better informed the predators are. Okay, and I think mm-hmm. in the news, right, lately there's a lot mm-hmm. of um, a lot of scam going on, a lot of people losing money, and I think one of the latest <laughs> one is actually the uh, cleaning service scam. So they actually lost like twenty thousands over t- ten over thousands of ringgit. Okay, mm-hmm. and I, and one of it was actually. I mean, like a close relative of mine also had it and the apps is actually in the, uh, what you call our Google Play Store. It's called yep. Easy. Yeah? So it's very worrying. Okay, it's very worrying that the uh, app is actually found and you can download it from Google Play Store. So we can see actually the predators, they go so far just to appear legitimate. Yeah. So mm-hmm. actually for this reason, we here at UKM, we are very uh, serious in um, raising awareness. So during the school holiday, we organize school holiday programs for the primary and secondary school students, okay, mainly to instill good cyber habits. Uh, and then last year, uh, we collaborated with the Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development, as well as the International Muslim Women Union. And we actually educated over 200 women uh, on cyber crimes and basic protection. So we regularly have this kind of program. So if you are interested, do check out our website, okay, at www.ukm.my. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Fariza, for a brief introduction of yourself. And the programs UKM has to help women and children. There are too many cyber threats out there, and this brings us to the topic for today, which is security for digital transformations everywhere you need it. So many organizations may have uh, overlooked the critical components of digital transformations in their rush to keep up with the rapid changes and remain competitive or even relevant by transforming processes. So what is this critical component? But before we discuss further about that, maybe could you uh, please explain us what does the digital transformations mean? Yeah, basically to different people, they have a different view of the digital transformation. Yeah, so in the academic 
Well, okay, we have uh, this um, sco uh, academic scholar, Dr. Gregory Vial from University of Montreal. So he has actually gone through almost 23 definitions of digital transformation found in academic journals between 2011 and 2018. And formally, he defines it as digital transformation is the process where digital technologies create disruptions, yeah? triggering strategic responses from organizations that seek to alter their value creation path while managing the structural changes and organizational barriers that affect the positive and negative outcome of this process. So basically, it boils down to the use of digital technologies such as social media, web, mobile internet, uh, cloud computing, analytics, internet of things, blockchain, to create new or modify existing business processes organization, culture, and customer experience. So we can see it's very wide, yeah? So it's different from digitization, which is just transforming um, what you call paper to soft copy, all right? It's, okay, it's also more than digitalization. Digitalization is just focusing on improving the established processes with technology, okay? You make things more efficient and so on. But the impact is less. So digital transformation, the the, it is a wide transformation process that includes whole organization. It engages all the processes, all the employees. It builds on strategic vision and implementation using technology to innovate, uh, create new value, okay, new value, new revenue stream, reach new market in addition to increase efficiency and productivity. So we can see it impacts not only the organization, but also industry and society. So society, which is us, yeah. All right. So it causes disruption. Okay. It has profound impact on consumer behavior, increased the availability of data. So a lot of data get generated by all this digital transformation process. Okay. So I want to give one example, which is Grab. Yeah. So Grab mm -hmm. is an example of the digital transformation of the taxi industry. So you can see the traditional taxi business lost its monopoly. Okay, so now anyone, okay, anyone can provide transportation services. Uh, it, okay, so this one, it can have a negative impact on the certain industry, for example, the taxi itself, right? But at the same time, it create, okay, it create new opportunities. It create jobs, yeah? We have the uh, gig economy, okay? Anyone who, who doesn't have any job easily can become a grab driver at any point of time, yeah? So it's a free market system, okay? Uh, organizations can... Okay, so it's not just for Grab now. We have a lot of uh, gig economy, we have the Panda, we have Shopee and things like that. Okay, so anyone can hire independent worker for short-term job roles, yeah? And then as for impact on the society, okay? So just now was for industry, so now we look at impact on society. Now people hold less importance to owning car, okay? They can happily rely on Grab. So indirectly, you can reduce the traffic. We can reduce the carbon um, release to the uh, environment. So in the end, this is actually good, okay? Uh, yeah, all right. I think, yeah, that, I think that basically talk, tells us about digital transformation. The Seasons of Mobility at Work podcast is sponsored by Aspo. Please stay tuned for more content about managing your business with technologies with us. All right, understood. So overall, the digital transformations uh, encompasses data, technology, uh, processes, and organizational change that guide companies' transformations in an increasingly digital world. So digital transformations can also be thought as, uh, of as either of a catch phrase or a completely ambiguous or complex topic. However, it is more about how an organization establishes its goals and business outcomes. So anyway, um, I also heard that digital adoption is also essential for the digital transformation success. I understand that uh, digital adoption is the process of learning how to use uh, te new technology to its full potentials, right? What about it? Could you uh, tell us more about the digital adoption? Yes, yeah. So indeed, actually, digital transformation is actually prompted okay, by the adoption of digital technology. Okay? But these digital technologies on their own, they do not provide much value to the organization. So for example, the organization's internet presence uh, is usually represented by a corporate website. So typ typically, depending on the organization's site, uh, size, yeah, it's, they either host it on their own web server or they host it on uh, what you call web hosting service provider. Uh, 
So with the introduction of cloud platforms, organizations are actually moving their corporate websites to the cloud. Okay, so it provides efficient maintenance, reduce operational costs. And so this move to the cloud is an example of adoption of technology. So they are adopting the cloud, but it does not add any value. So there's no exceptional changes to customer. Customer are still viewing the same corporate website. So in digital transformation, so the key question is, what is our technology really capable of and how can we adapt our business and processes to make the most uh, of our technology investment? So if we go back to the cloud example just now, what is the full capability of the cloud? Okay, uh, so we have cloud service providers like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, okay, all of them have premises globally distributed according to region, uh, US, Europe, Asia region, and they also have like the artificial intelligence, the AI cloud services. So if we leverage on this and we put corporate website at each region, okay, you will deliver the content to global customer within seconds. So, and then if you customize, okay, so on top of that, you customize, you personalize the content using the advanced um, AI algorithm. Uh, example, you use uh, AI-driven translation tool to deliver uh, content according to the um, region's native language. All right. And another example is if you use analytics to recommend products, content based on the customer browsing history and so on. So this is what we call true transformation. So it will increase the customer base, engage them with uh, unique experiences. Okay. So basically, academy, academically, Okay, we have some scholars that actually sum up four, four prominent changes okay, in the uh, business model that is brought about by digital transformation when digital technologies are used to its full potential. All right, so I think the first one is um, value proposition, which are the organization's uh, product or service of value to the customer. So what is happening now is digital transformation, it causes the switch from profiting from the sales of this normal product to the sales of profiting from the service. Okay, so on top of just product, you can actually uh, add on services. So exa one example, okay. So Netflix, it, they used to profit by renting up movie CDs and DVDs, but now they are uh, doing video streaming services. So they are profiting from there and grab. Okay, they started off with grab car service. Now they have grab food service and more. Okay, so that's the first uh, change. The second one is uh, value network. Okay, so value network refers to the set of connections between organizations and individuals. All right, so these individuals can be either customers, uh, suppliers, and so on. So digital transformation enables the close collaboration and uh, it allows the customer with the ability to become co-creator of value in the value network. So YouTube, okay, TikTok, okay, they are good example of this. Users of YouTube and TikToks, they are the one providing the content, all right? And the one that is making money out of it is Google and ByteDance, okay? They earn, okay, they earn, the big, they earn big money from advertisement that is related to the content provided by the creators, by the customers, yeah, by the users. So, yeah, this is, I think, a very good um, business model, okay? And the third one, digital channels. So digital transformation, they add more customer-facing channels, okay? So for example, uh, we have the Big Bad Wolf. I think everyone in Malaysia know Big Bad Wolf, okay? So they started organizing um, big sales, okay, at exhibition hall. And then we had the COVID-19 pandemic. So now we see them a lot online, okay? They have made their way to Facebook, Instagram, other social media platform, and they have also added their sales channel via Shopee, okay? So, uh, in of, of course, on top of their e-commerce website, okay? And last but not least, okay, is the enabling agility. So, digital transformation enables organization to adapt quickly to changing environment with the increasingly available data. So we have lots of data and data is uh, used now in data analytics to discover untapped market opportunities, okay? Allowing you to make better decision to increase customer proximity. So just like the big that with example, they added a sales channel uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic and choosing, okay, rightly choosing Shopee, okay? As that, at that time, 
Okay, that was the local buyer's choice of platform. All right, thank you. The Seasons of Mobility at Work podcast is sponsored by Aspo. Please stay tuned for more content about managing your business with technologies with us. All right. Uh, so, based on what I've explained just now, uh, I understand that digital transformations actually provides opportunities for business to improve efficiency, productivity, and innovations. Right. So businesses uh, also can uh, benefit from digital transformations by increasing efficiencies, expanding a, into a new market, and generating new revenue streams. So now let's talk about a little bit of states. Um, according to the Gartner study, uh, 79% of corporate uh, strategies claim to be digitizing their businesses in order to generate new revenue streams. But however, progress has been slow and with less than half of companies claiming to have the uh, transitions putting digital initiative at the center of their strategy. So perhaps you could also share with us a little bit about the relevant statistics on this matter. All right. Okay, so according to the uh, Department of Statistics, yeah, they last published statistic on the usage of ICT and e-commerce survey by Establishment 2020, which is Malaysia's e-commerce. We can see Malaysia's e-commerce value increased by 33% to 896 billion in 2020 from 675 billion in 2019. And if we comparing the first quarter of 2021 and 2020 e-commerce income, we also see a 30% year-on-year rise. Yeah? So, okay, uh, despite the rise in the e-commerce income, okay, we can see that Malaysian businesses' digital adoption rate is actually not encouraging. Uh, according to World Bank data, prior to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, Malaysian businesses underperform compared to other Asian country, ASEAN countries. Uh, such as Thailand, Philippines, uh, Vietnam, and Singapore in their digitalization efforts. Uh, around 77% of SMEs in Malaysia remain at the uh, basic digitalization stage. Okay, We can also observe the lag in uh, business digital adoption based on the organization's web presence. So statistics on the digital technology usage and internet usage. So only 53.9% organization uh, have a web presence in 2019. And out of this 53.9%, only 48.5% had a website. So 60% of the organizations relied on social medias. 63.8% uh, adopted mobile internet and technologies, 46.8% cloud computing, and sadly, okay, only 6.3% use advanced technologies such as data analytics. Okay, so the reported purpose of the internet usage reveals signs that local organizations are still at the um, basic digitalization level, with uh, organizations primarily using the internet for general communication, such as sending and receiving emails, posting and receiving, uh, reading messages, uh, interaction with government organizations, VOIP, and for personal staff recruitment and development, and for obtaining information. So only a minority organization use the internet to provide customer services and deliver product, which is 35.8% and 15.3% respectively. So according to, the, according to one study conducted by SME Corp and Huawei Technologies, uh, it is actually hard to find uh, micro, small and medium enterprises okay, that have adopted IoT, cloud computing uh, and data analytics. Organizations that have adopted digital technologies are more likely to be the larger organization. Okay, the uh, Department of Statistics, uh, Malaysia, they revealed that the digital adoption is highest in more developed states, uh, such as KL, Selangor, Johor, and uh, Penang. Okay, and uh, it's observed that many SMEs are still ill-equipped to make the transition towards digitalization and ultimately digital transformation. So typically, cost, okay, cost is still the main challenge. Uh, digitalization costs such as internet connectivity fees, hardware, software costs and subscription, and other challenges include talent shortage and gaps in digital infrastructure. Okay, and they have launched uh, some programs and effort towards this. Uh, one of it is the my Malaysia, the Malaysia Digital Economic Blueprint, uh, My Digital, 
uh, was launched last year to map out the digital economy's role in driving economy recovery through digital transformation. And also MDEC is currently implementing the G Digital Investment Future 5, uh, called D5 strategy, uh, to attract investment for Malaysia's digital economy plan from 2021 to 2025. And recently, uh, MOSTI, the Ministry of Science, Technology and Invo Innovation, is proposing to establish a center for the fourth industrial revolution to champion the Industry 4.0 initiative and accelerate the technology adoption. So this center will be the one-stop center for all local organizations, especially SMEs. So SMEs should be aware of this initiative and available support. Okay, in digital transformation, okay, organization, they tend to focus on the uh, functionality and usability of adopted technologies to deliver the uh, what you call ultimate customer experience. And okay, and security is often overlooked, okay, especially when cost is the main concern. Okay, so there are potential issues associated. Okay, with the uh, pervasive use of digital technology, primarily in the domain of security and privacy. So one example is in the automobile industry. Okay, we change from key base to keyless start system. So, uh, okay, this is because consumer we often forget our keys. Okay, so when we have the keyless system in place, it becomes so convenient. Okay, there's no more need to search or go through the keys okay in our handbag and my handbag especially is like it seems bottomless okay and then so it's convenient to us and then again it becomes convenient to the hackers yeah and we can see the number of keyless car theft reported in the past five years increasing okay so just earlier this year we have a local malaysian woman she posted on facebook about her brother-in-law's car being stolen in less than a minute in Alam. Okay, so for all the uh, what you call the gains we get from technology, there's also significant risks for individuals and society as a whole. So when putting in digital technology in action, security and privacy must remain a top priority. All right, thank you so much, Fariza. I think this is the end of our discussions for today. We haven't finished yet, but we'll be right back to discussing more about it in part two. If you are keen to know more about what we would be discussing next, please make sure to stay tuned and stay updated for the next part. We'll be revealing more on what you need to know in part 2. See ya!